Hi, I'm Matt. Today I'm going to walk through with you how a typical process control system is hooked up in a plant. This series is split into two parts. The first part describes the loop diagram from the fuel to the PLC panel. The second part dives into the configuration and design of the PLC and its program. Without further ado, let's start on part one. Here we see the instrument loop diagram and it shows how devices are connected from the field to the PLC panel. In this example, the compressor surge control and from left to right we can see the field control, uh, the field processors, the field panel, the panel rear and the panel front. The field process area on the left shows various field equipment and the tag numbers which can be referred to at the bottom. For example, FT42, Suction Flow Transmitter, and PDT42, Differential Pressure Transmitter. Each has two terminals, positive and negative, connected via red and black wires, and signal is transmitted via analog 4 to 20 mA. In the second column, you can see the fuel panel, sometimes also known as remote I.O. The numbers represent the points on the terminal block, and the, and the fuel panel serves as an intermediate point for disconnecting and isolating cables, signal continuity checks, and troubleshooting. JB stands for junction box where terminal blocks are housed. For hazardous zones, junction box requires to be explosion proof. That means any spark within the box will not ignite the flammable material outside the box. It will also contain any explosion originating within the box. Brands such as Pepperoni Fuge provide such boxes. It is also important for cable entry points to have proper glanding to prevent ingress of flammable material into the box or into the cable duct. Brands such as Hawk provide such cable glands. Back to the loop diagram. The cabling from fuel to panel. Typically in green fuel plants, cables sheathed in armor sleeves may be pulled through underground ducting or laid underground by cut and cover. This is to save overhead space. However, the cons of this is that cable repair is very difficult. Alternatively, cables are neatly tucked and run via cable trays. This method typically uses up more cable, copper cables, which increases the cost. That brings us to the end of part 1. See you in part 2 where we will dive into the PLC deeper. We have looked at the loop diagram from the fuel to the PLC panel. Now let's look at the PLC panel itself. Here's a typical PLC panel. From the top left are the main circuit breakers for the incoming power. Then you have the power supply units which convert 120 or 240 volt AC to 24 volt DC for the CPU and other panel components. Such protection devices protect the panel in case of spikes due to events like lightning strikes. In the middle row, you have the brains of the PLC, the CPU, where the program logic is stored and run. Alongside it are the input and outputs or I.O. modules that communicate with the CPU. These I.O. modules are also connected to terminal blocks at the bottom, which serve as contacts interfacing with few devices, either receiving signals from this field or sending signals out to the field. Finally, all the devices are ground to earth with a, on, with a ground bus. So how does the program in the PLC CPU look like? Hooking up a laptop installed with an editor software such as RS Logix for Allen Bradley PLCs, we will be able to see and read the program. One format is Ladder Logic. Ladder Logic reads from top to bottom, left to right. On the left are the inputs, on the right are the outputs. Each row is called a rung. This example shows the ladder logic of a water tank control system, water level control. On the top rung, zero, we can see a relay, a CUIN relay, which typically starts the program and latches on the master coil until the, the normal closed top switch is open. On rung one, if the level high switch is energized, the outlet valve will be energized to open and release water from the tank. The outlet valve will only be de-energized to close when the normally closed low level switch is de-energized when triggered. Similarly, on rung 2, 
The inlet valve is energized when the low level switch is triggered and energized, allowing water to fill the tank. The inlet valve will only de-energize to close when the normal, normally closed level high switch is de-energized when triggered. In addition, in this run, there is another parallel branch which allows the inlet valve to open and fill the tank on start. Another format of PLC program is the functional block diagram. To give a very simple non-plant example of a vending machine, starting from block 1 on the bottom left, if a person inserts coins equal to the price, the end gate input 3 is true. Next, looking at block 2 at the top, if the person presses the button for the fixed delay period of time, input 2 of the end gate is true. Finally, the person chooses his drink, and all three inputs of the end gate is true, so the person gets his drink. In addition, he gets his change. In the same way, functional block diagrams are used to represent PLC logic in the plant. This is how the fuel level of a plant control system works. In the greater scheme of things, there is the supervisory level and enterprise level, which consists of largely IT components such as servers, workstations, switches, firewalls, etc. This concludes part 2 of the series. I hope you have learned more about how a process control system works. Thank you.